Today, I am announcing my candidacy for the 2024 Republican nomination to represent Colorado's fourth congressional district in the United States House of Representatives. It's the right move for me personally, and it's the right decision for those who support our conservative movement. This is the right move for Colorado, for us. Since the first day I ran for public office, I promised I would do whatever it takes to stop the socialists and communists from taking over our country. That means staying in the fight, but it also means not allowing Hollywood elites and progressive money groups to buy the third district, a seat that they have no business owning. I will not allow dark money that is directed at destroying me personally to steal this seat. It's not fair to the third district and the conservatives there who have fought so hard for our victories, of which I'm incredibly grateful. You heard that right, friends. Congresswoman Bobo announced on December 27 that she is now running in Colorado's fourth congressional district as opposed to the third after she nearly lost that seat in the 2022 election. In fact, she only beat her Democratic opponent, Adam Frisch, by 546 votes. And early polling indicates that she would again have a very difficult time keeping that seat in 2024. So if you couldn't care less about your constituents and winning was your only concern, what do you do? Well, you bail, and that's exactly what she did. Now, this new district that she's running in actually belonged to Republican Ken Buck, but after he announced that he is retiring, she saw it as an opportunity to run for that seat because it's safer in her opinion. And she's not necessarily wrong, but it still does carry some risks, primarily because she has to participate now in a GOP primary that's open. There's no incumbent in that district. Now, as John Dorman of Business Insider explains, she could also lose the 4th District GOP primary and find herself out of a job as she's now running in an Eastern Plains anchor district where she has few local ties. Colorado State Representative Richard Holtorf, one of the candidates in the primary, immediately accused Bobert of seat shopping after her announcement. And he's not wrong to be mad because even if she doesn't have ties to that district, she still does have a lot of name recognition and as we've all learned in American politics, name recognition goes a long way. But on the flip side, Dorman also argues that this could actually help Republicans keep that seat in the third district with a more moderate Republican as the nominee. Although Adam Frisch, the Democrat in that race, has managed to raise $7.7 .7 million, which will make it really difficult for any Republican to defeat him. But I mean... It's also a pretty conservative district. Now, she pointed that out in the announcement video, the fact that he raised so much money, and she denounced the dark money being spent against her in District 3. And it's true, this is happening. But it goes both ways, because in 2022, she had nearly $700,000 in dark money being spent against her, but also had 620000 in dark money being spent for her, but she still managed to outraise her Democratic opponent overall by millions of dollars. But the difference this time is that he's actually raised a comparable amount to her. And if he almost beat her after being outraised by millions of dollars, imagine what could happen if he actually outraised her. And therein lies the reason why she's bailing. But she's right to point out the issues inherent with dark money spending. I think that it should be banned entirely. There should be no dark money. In fact, I think that all campaigns should be publicly financed so people are choosing candidates and not corporations but the question is has Bobert used her position of power to actually push for campaign finance reform has she proposed any changes at all to this corrupt system that she's now denouncing i mean it seems perfectly like she is okay with the system so long as it benefits her but once it's no longer useful to her and actually threatens her then all of a sudden she's against it and speaking out against dark money but she's not just a hypocrite. In fact, she's been accused of illegally spending 2022 campaign funds and reportedly even spent campaign cash at the bar owned by her ex-boyfriend, who's the one that she gave a public hand job to during a Beetlejuice play. So, I mean, if you're not proposing changes to the system and you benefit directly from dark money, I feel like you don't get to complain about dark money. We should be the ones complaining about dark money, not candidates who take dark money, who benefit from dark money who get elected based on the significance of dark money spending in that race. Now, her former Democratic opponent, Adam Frisch, responded to this news on Twitter and expectedly, he uh, 
criticized her. He writes, this just proves Lauren Boebert was never committed to the communities of Colorado 3. She is only in politics for herself. And he's right. But to be fair, this isn't necessarily a unique phenomenon. This isn't a Lauren Boebert problem. This is an American politics problem. I mean, how many politicians have we seen just recently essentially lie to their constituents about who they are just to get elected? And then once they're elected, they change flip like that kirsten cinema mr i'm not a progressive john fetterman george fucking santos mondaire jones who was once a progressive democrat is now running as a new deal centrist democrat i mean they're all opportunists and none of them actually care about the people who they're supposed to be representing and lauren bobert is no different and if adam frisch were to get elected i mean i can't necessarily say that he would change because he's already a pretty moderate democrat if not a conservative democrat outright but this isn't a lauren bobert issue specifically the reason why she's bad in particular is not because she lied to her constituents the problem is because she is a fascist who poses a danger to democracy but she further explained her reasoning as to why she switched districts as if it wasn't already obvious and she decided to name drop several celebrities and she cited them as being indirectly responsible for this decision let's watch they've raised 10 million dollars out of aspen and i take the other um places in your district it's all flowing through there because of you you believe by switching to the fourth you're cutting off the, that money will cease and you'll give a uh, you'll give a, a, a mega candidate a shot to win in in colorado third Steve, that's exactly correct. Uh, they do not have policies that they are running on. They're simply running against Lauren Boebert. And uh, it's not just Aspen that the money is coming from. It's coming from Hollywood. When you have Barbara Streisand coming in and donating to the Democrat, when you have Ryan Reynolds coming in and donating to the Democrat, uh, it shows you that Hollywood is trying to buy their way into Congress. You have George Soros and his dark money groups that have already spent $2 million in a non election year in Colorado's third district. And so this cuts that uh, that funding that they're receiving now and gives an opportunity uh, for conservatives to have a stronger presence in Colorado. So I'm not abandoning my district. I love Colorado's third district and will continue to fight for each and every person who's in the district. Except you are literally abandoning your district specifically to save your own ass. So what are you talking about? Do you have no fucking shit? I mean, it's Lauren Boebert. Of course, she has no shame. But like to say such a demonstrable lie is just baffling to me. I get that it's Lauren Bobo and she's not the brightest bulb in the bunch. But holy shit, have some fucking self-awareness to not just be so brazen when you're lying to people. Now, it's also really bizarre to me that she is randomly name dropping celebrities like Barbara Streisand and Ryan Reynolds as if Hollywood elites trying to buy this election is significant. Because when you actually explore this a little bit and you look at the numbers, that doesn't really seem to be the case, at least based on what she's saying. So the Hill's Lauren Sorza reports, according to Federal Election Commission, filings, Streisand donated $1,000 to Frisch's campaign in April, while Reynolds donated $500 in March. In other words, $1,500 combined between two celebrities is tantamount to Hollywood trying to buy that seat. What? I mean, what an incredible thing to say. If you remained in that district, Lauren, and you lost, I promise you, it wouldn't have been because two celebrities made comparatively small donations. I mean, Jesus Christ. But notice how she first blamed dark money, and now she's blaming Ryan Reynolds and Barbara Streisand. That's not dark money because you're seeing their names in the FEC reports. So that is not dark money. It's the opposite of dark money. But any money being spent against her is a problem because she feels entitled to a seat in Congress. Any seat, just pick one. She just wants to be there because she loves the power. And she shared those names because I think it perpetuates this narrative that conservatives are actually more representative of regular people because they're against elites. See, elites hate them. At least Hollywood elites do. But but no, it's just you, Bobo. You are an extremist, and most normal people are repulsed by you, and they don't want you in Congress. Even apolitical people can see that you're just a bad person, and you don't care about anyone. You're not focused on policy. You're focused on self-aggrandizement. So you're a bad person. So it's not that the elites are against you. Everyone is against you. The elites love you, actually, because that's why there's so much dark money being spent on your behalf. But whether or not she's going to be able to stay in Congress, it really is an open question at this point because I just don't know. But how hilarious would it be 
if she actually ended up losing after bailing on her constituents for what she believed to be a safer race. I am trying to speak that into the universe because I'm trying to manifest it for something that I think we would all like to see in 2024. But my God, would I enjoy seeing that? Or if she ended up switching back to District 3 because she saw polling results showing her losing the GOP primary. Either way, I think that there's potential for a lot of hilarity to ensue. But either way, we'll just have to wait to see how it all plays out. Vagina. 